Many of us needs to learn that the authority of Jesus comes to us and then he said, uh, whatever you say, it, it will come to pass. If you believe without doubting in your heart, you can speak to this mountain, be removed, and it shall go. That's powerful. Telling me Jesus, na, he said, he, he said he, uh, I, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you lose shall be loosed. Whatever you bind shall be bound. Amen? What, whatever you lose shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And so there's power in, in the word. Raise your hands. Let me pray for you. There's power in your word. These are your people, O oh Lord. These are people who have been forgiven. Sins have been deleted and erased. It will not be remembered anymore. These are your victorious army, the church. Lord, marching forward, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The gates of hell shall not prevail against them. Lord, when they speak, they can cast out demons in your name. They will speak life to the dead. They will heal the sick. They will raise the dead. Lord, the power of your words in our heart. Salamat, Lord. Thank you so much, O oh God. I pray that this morning, Lord, whatever burdens they have, that they will be able to conquer it in the name of Jesus. Put the, your words in their mouth, O oh Lord. Put your words in our mouth, O oh Lord. We will prophesy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And everyone say amen. amen. Now get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. How many of you have been, have been, you look back and then you have been, you have observed that you have been growing in the Lord. How many of you are growing in the Lord? Amen. You are not the victim that you used to be. You are now the victor. Amen. Okay, let's read two portions of the scriptures. One in James chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. And then Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 21. James 1 was our text last time, but I'd like to emphasize one thing for this morning. And then Romans 4 will be our main topic because this, this is good uh, example and illustration how to apply James chapter 1. All right, James 1, 23 to 25. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says. It's like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Amen. Now, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verses 17 to 21. Here is a good example of a person who looked at the mirror, meaning the word of God speaking to him, and his response, his name was Abraham. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith 
and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Amen. How do we respond to God when God speaks to us and he is revealing from his own eyes, from his own word, who you are? He would say, this is who you are. How will you respond? God spoke to Abraham. Abraham, this is who you are. You will be father of many nations. And we will see how Abraham responded. It's, it's good to learn how to respond at the time when God speaks to us. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, you answer the prayer that the disciples had when they asked, increase our faith. This morning, answer us, O Lord, increase our faith. Increase the faith of our young people who many times have been, have been feeling down, very low self-esteem, and thinking about bad things spoken to them, Lord, by people. We pray for our parents and, and even senior citizens, Lord, who, who are seeking out for your purpose for them, Lord. You have a plan for Abraham, who was very old. You have a plan for senior citizens here, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. You will provide for us. You will open the door for us. Open our eyes, the eyes of our faith. Help us, Lord, to grow in the faith and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless your people in understanding the perfect law and the law of liberty, the law of freedom. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good morning. Uh, we, we discovered that uh, in spite of the social media being spreading all over the world, some of you are not in Facebook yet. So I, I would encourage you to use Facebook in, in a, a good way, in a godly way. People have been using it in a bad way, so others don't want to be involved. But but you can be involved. We have a good communication system in Facebook. And I have been posting in Facebook what I believe should, be, should encourage other people about the mirror word. You, have been, you heard me speak last, last Sunday about the mirror word. The mirror word is the word of God that you read. And as you read, you begin to see yourself in what you are reading. God is speaking to you about you. Hello? That's, that's how it is. Look, look at the verses again uh, in, in James. Because I want you to see something that is very useful, should be very useful to us. It says, anyone who listens to the word, maybe this preaching or maybe your own personal reading, but does not do what it says, is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. Underline that word, who looks at his face in the mirror. God has a mirror for you to use. You look at yourself in the mirror. And it says, after looking at himself, he saw himself in the mirror. The problem is, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. That's the problem. That's why you, you really have to remind yourself, never forget what you look like. Let me give you an example. How many of you here have already received Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior? Raise your hands. All right. If you have received the Lord Jesus into your heart, the Bible speaks to you about you. John chapter 1 verse 12, it says that you have been given authority to become a child of God. You look at the mirror of the word of God. You read that portion. Oh, I have received the Lord. And it says, now, because you have received the Lord, you are given the authority to become a child of God. God. 
Is it wrong for a Christian to say that he is a child of God? You answer me. What do you see in the mirror of the word? Are you a child of God? The Bible says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a brand new person. The old is gone. The new has come. That is what you read in the word of God. If the word of God talks like that, and it applies to you because you are now in Christ. Can you see who you are in the Word of God? You know who you are in the Word of God? You are a brand new person. Palakpakan natin si Lord. Now when you, you, you remember all the time you are a brand new person, you go out, you go out of this, this door. And then some people there will shout at you and talk to you and treat you as if you are the old person. You just smile and say, I'm not the same person you knew. I am now a child of God and I'm a brand new person inside. That's how you live. Because some people don't know how to apply the word of God. The word of God is like a mirror. I want to emphasize that all the time because from now on, the Lord is preparing the church to be the kind of church God wants them to be. You will be. You know what you will be? You will be a radiant church. A glorious church without spot, without wrinkle or any blemish. You will be as beautiful and as white as the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will beautify you with mercy and grace. He will beautify you with all kinds of blessings. You will not be a wrinkled old bride. You will be radiant and glorious. He will beautify your character from the inside. He will remove all the dirts. And you will not anymore be called ugly. You will be called beauty. Hallelujah. Amen. It's all about the church. And that is the reason why this lesson has blessed me. In fact, I'm reading it and I, I pause a moment and I would cry. And I read it again. And I say, after looking at himself, this is what I see about myself. If I go away and forget about who I look, I will be behaving wrongly. You know, a lion can behave like a cat. If he forgets that he's a lion. <laughs> a lion. You can behave like an a, a old sinner if you forget that you are now a blood-washed, redeemed saint of the Most High God. Verse 25, whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. There are two important words here. Perfect and freedom. You know the, the law in the Old Testament. You heard about the Old Testament? You heard about the Ten Commandments? How many of you have heard about the law, the Ten Commandments? Raise your hands. Found in Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 6 or 5 and 6. The law, the Ten Commandments, that's what you know. But the law came with Moses. But before Moses, 400 plus years before Moses, Abraham was called by Jesus, by the Lord. And Abraham went out of the Ur of Chaldees, went to the Canaan land, and there he lived in Canaan because God wanted to give him the whole land and gave him a promise that will affect the future. In fact, it has affected us. What happened in Abraham in Romans chapter 4, according to, to Paul, affected you. Because what was written was not only for the sake of Abraham, it was also for ours. In other words, this message is for you. Tell your neighbor, this message is for you. Amen. Now, so, here's my, uh, my understanding of the mirror word. The mirror word from the Bible, from the Word of God, from the mouth of God, is about who you are in God. Aren't you, aren't you glad God knows you? And He knows, He thinks good about you. Let me say that again. 
He thinks good about you. People think bad about us. Not just your enemy, but sometimes even your parents think bad about you. Even your loved ones sometimes, they think bad about you, but God think good about you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The mirror word is what you look like to him. When he speaks to you, this is how you look like to him. You, you know the mirror? I showed you a mirror last time. If it is good mirror, not the, the weirdo mirror that the fat becomes big and the short becomes tall and, you know, they lie. Those mirrors lie. If it's a normal mirror, the normal mirror will say something about you. It will not lie. Now, the mirror compared, it was compared as the word of God. The mirror will tell you who you are are and what you look like now warning the mirror will not tell you about who you will be you cannot say mirror mirror on the wall who is the fairest of them all and the mirror will tell you lie. The mirror on the wall will, will lie to you. But the mirror of the word of God will never lie to you. Hallelujah. Now, the problem is when you read the word of God and you look at the, yourself, the, that is yourself, sometimes it does not sink in yet. You have no faith about what God is saying to you. But God, when he, be, he, he begins to communicate to you who you are to Him, He will tell you who you really are to Him. Amen. He, he, it's not about your future, it's about your now. The mirror of the Word will not even tell you and remind you about who you were in the past. The mirror is about the present and the now. It is so positive. The now. He, this is who you are right now. This is how I want you to look at yourself right now. And because... If you know who you are, you will behave the way you know who you are. You are a child of God. You are beloved. You are a member of his household. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Hallelujah, you know? Do you know who you are? If you know who you are, the word of God will tell you who you are. You will behave the way you are. So, here are some verses that I want you to check if you want. Go to the next frame. Uh, just learning about Abraham's example. You, you, you take note about this one. The perfect law, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 19 let me show you some, some of this. Hebrews chapter 7, 19 says to us that the law of Moses can never make anyone perfect. But the coming of Jesus, the law, the principle of Jesus makes everyone perfect. It's why, that's why it's called the, the perfect law of liberty. Because it it, it makes people perfect. The law only condemns. The law of God condemns. How many of you have noticed that if you have a ruler, have you used rulers? If you have a ruler that is compared to the law or the commandments, the purpose of the ruler measuring rod is to measure the length or your height maybe. Measure your height. But it cannot increase your height. Hello? You go to the weighing machine. We have a weighing machine. I don't go to the weighing machine regularly because I'm afraid it will tell me the truth that I am overweight, weighing myself. But the weighing machine will not improve your weight. It can only describe how heavy you are. Right? 
cannot improve you. The same with the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments cannot make anyone perfect or holy. The Ten Commandments will condemn. It will cut. The Ten Commandments will, 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 will make you feel so rotten inside because you have not obeyed the Ten Commandments. It was not made to be uh, an instrument to make you perfect. Hello? You understand? So the law was never intended to give you holiness. However, when Jesus came, different story. Hallelujah. Amen. Different story. He makes people perfect. Palakpakan natin natin, Lord. It's called law of liberty. In, in James 1, the, the, uh, the principle of Jesus, as you read the word, it, it provides for you the law of liberty because it gives you freedom. Say the word freedom. We have been singing about, I am free, free, free. Free from demons, free from Satan, free from sin, free from guilt, free from bad conscience, free from all records. I'm free. The old is gone, the new has come. Palakpakan natin si Lord. You have to accept what, what it says. And then, of course, Romans 4, 14 to 15 talks about the law of faith. Really, in, in James chapter 1, it is about faith that works, that lives out. When you see yourself, you believe. Amen? When you see yourself in the Word, God speaking to you, you accept it, you believe it, and then you live it out. You don't forget who you are. God says, this is who you are. Don't forget who you are. That is very important in our days. Hallelujah. So let's go back to that story of Abraham. Let's go forward. March to the story. Abraham, according to our notes and to what we have read, first of all, Abraham believed the promise of God. He believed the promise of God. Romans 4. Let's read verse 17. Just review with me. As I announce the verse, just, just move along with me because it will train you how to examine the word. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. All right. He is our father in the sight of God in whom, underline this, he believed. Now, why is that big deal? When God said, I will make you father of many nations, is that big deal for Abraham to receive that? Yes or no? It was big deal. Why? Because when God spoke to Abraham about making him father of many nations, he was already 100 years old. The name Abram was his name from childhood. And he carried that name. He introduced himself. His identity, I'm Abram. Abram means exalted father. Ah, you are an exalted father. Well, nice to see you. Nice to meet, nice to meet you. How many children do you have? Abram smiles and says, zero. Is that not very embarrassing to be called Abraham, father, exalted father, but you have zero children, no child, and you are now past childbearing age. You are 100 years old. His, his wife, Sarah, was 95 years old. Look at your neighbor and find who is 95 years old here. Find out how they look like. If you have met 95 years old people, or especially women, you will look at them, you see pasas, wrinkled up. Understand? Incapable of bearing children. That is the reason why to, to hear, listen, to hear God say, you will be father of many nations. That is big deal. Because
because it passed reason. Reason cannot accept it. Many of you would not accept the word of God, even if I recite it here, because it contradicts your logic. It contradicts your thoughts and your minds. It contradicts reality. But God is more real than what you can see. Hallelujah. God is powerful. Hallelujah. We were examining a verse in Genesis chapter 1 with the Berean students. And before the fall of man, before sinning, God spoke to them. And it says in Genesis chapter 1, And God blessed man. He blessed man. Saying, be fruitful and multiply. Now listen, that's the word. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the whole earth. Fill the whole earth. Be fruitful and multiply. So, let me ask you. The word or the statement, be fruitful and multiply. Is that a command or what? It sounds like it is a command, right? Be fruitful and multiply. It sounds like it is a command. But really, it's not a command. Because it says, and God blessed them. It was a blessing, not a command. Are you following? And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply. It is not a command. It is a positive declaration. It is a positive statement. God is saying, you will have this capability. You will have this capacity. Be something, hallelujah. Be someone who will multiply. That's the meaning of that word. You will be fruitful and reproduce. And you will prosper in the land. He believed the promise of God. Amen. Sige naman kamo, amen man kamo. It says, he believed God's promise, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. So, you know what Abraham did? He heard, he knew, he listened to the promise. James chapter 1 says that you listen first to the word. That's the first. Abraham received the word. He did not create it in his own mind. You know, one day like Abraham was looking, ah, I think I, I want many children. Because some people will do that. They are godly people, but they create things in their mind. No, you wait for God to speak to you and say, okay, this is what I want to do with your life. You wait. Will you say amen? Sorry. Uh, next next uh, frame, please. Here's what Abraham did as part of his believing the word. He knew what God said. It was clear. He knew what God said. And he interpreted what God said. He interpreted it. Look at, look at what, what this word says. Uh, that he should become a father of many nations. Verse 18. Verse 18. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. When God said, so shall your offspring be, he believed it. He interpreted it that he will really be father of many children. You, you know, this, this story is found in Genesis 17. God said, okay, I, I will make you father of many, many nations, not just father of few children, many nations. Abraham immediately believed. So God said, okay, I will change your identity. Not anymore, Abram would be your name, exalted father. I will change it. I will improve your name. How many of you want your name improved? Okay. You know, you know your, your name means guapa. And then it will be changed into pinaka guapa. Di ba na? Hallelujah. Abraham, your name is Exalted Father. I'll change it. You will have a rebrand. The rebrand is Abraham. Abraham means father of many nations. You will be a father of many nations. And in fact, I will change your name. 
And then I will give you this inheritance, the whole land of Canaan. Out of you will rise kings and noble children. Hallelujah. Out of you will rise judges and prophets. Out of you will rise people who will be great people. And God blessed him that way. He interpreted what God said. See, if you do not believe, you will not interpret. You will interpret it probably in a negative way. When God said, so your offspring will be like the stars in the sky, like the sand in the seashore, God said, so shall your children be as the sand on the seashore. Abraham believed. He immediately used that name, Abraham. Hey, Abraham. Eh, I'm not anymore, Abraham. Really? What's your name? My name now is Abraham, father of many nations. Really? How many children do you have? You wait. <laughs> Amen. I will not answer that, but just wait. Because he already knew. He will be a father of many nations. He believed it. Ah, you say, but Pastor Ray, if I do that right now in our days, they will call me crazy. Right? I know several people here, several old men. They think they can still be, you know, produce children. They think. They believe. Hallelujah. I'm praying that he will be given a wife. This brother, he is saying, I am capable of producing more children. Hallelujah. God bless you. You'll be Father Abraham. As many as the stars in the sky. Now, here's number two that Abraham uh, did to respond to the mirror word. Abraham not only believed in the promise, number two, he believed strongly in the promise. I know some of you can believe a promise, but your belief is like, hey, it's good if it happens. If not, it's okay with me. <laughs> that is not faith. That is just lazy faith. It will not be rewarded. If your faith is, it's good if it happens, good if it's not, it will not be rewarded. Because Hebrews chapter 11 says, if you come to God, you must come to God believing that He exists. And number two, that He is a rewarder of those that diligently, that's the word, He diligently seek Him. If, if you diligently seek Him using your faith, you will be rewarded. God is a rewarder. If not, God will look at you and say, oh, He's not really intense. He's not interested. He's not even excited. Hello? How many of you know that God can measure your excitement right now? Hallelujah. Amen. So, next, next frame, please. He believed strongly the promise. He did not just believe it like, uh, as I said, half-heartedly. He believed it strongly. Romans chapter 4, verse 18, again, it says, can I read this? Against all hope. Come on. Yes. Yes. This is how your faith should exercise, become stronger. Hallelujah. It says, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed God. You know what that means? against all hope. In other words, the situation is factually hopeless. Humanly speaking, there's no hope there. You are 100 years, years old, Abraham, and your wife is 95 years old, and not only 95 years old, he, he was barren. In other words, there's, there's the discrepancy in Sarah, she cannot give birth to a child. So even the age that should not be, you should not bother about the age because the, 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 the damage is in the womb. It cannot bear a child. Yes, even if, if that is the fact, the Bible says against that fact, 
against that hopeless situation, Abraham continued to believe. Na wala siyang nag-excited sa ilaw. Amen? Hallelujah! Oh Lord, help us! He believed anyway what he was told. He won't stop hoping. If you are told that you will be an instrument in God's hand, you say, oh, I don't think God can use me. That's what you think. But what can you believe? Do you believe God? How many of you believe God? How many of you believe that God can still speak? Raise your hands. How many of you believe that God can still perform what He says? Yes, He can. Kita ng mga Pilipinos, ginpanamkun kita sa duda. Tapat balis ka duda to na. We have to begin saying and thinking, Yes, Lord. Just say a word, my servant will be healed. Hallelujah. Just say a word, let your word be on me. Hallelujah. It will be fulfilled in me, Lord. Against all logic. Next verse. Next verse. Okay. Uh, verse 19. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact Say the word, he faced the fact. He faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and Sarah's womb was also dead. In other words, logic is against the promise that you will be a father of many nations. Against, but against all logic, the Bible says, Abraham believed. After considering his body, his age, his wife's womb, after consideration of these things, he still believes. Hallelujah. Amen. Next, number three, against unbelief. Uh, he did not, verse 20, yet he did not waver through unbelief. Say the word unbelief. See, every time we start believing, there is always unbelief on the on this side, very close to us. And we can have an option. Will I believe this or not believe this? Unbelief will be there. But according to this word, Abraham did not even look at unbelief. He regarded the promise of God, really uh, trusting it, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. You know what he did? He said, yes, I can believe. In fact, because I believe it, I will start giving glory to God. Look at the verse. He is showing us how Abraham responded to the mirror word. It is impossible. I look at the word. I look at myself. I look at the mirror. I look at myself. It defies logic. It is against reason. Many Christians cannot proceed with their faith. They do not grow because they think logic is more powerful than the word of God. They think their emotion and what their eyes can see is more powerful and more real than the Word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the surprise for you. God is able to call out things that do not exist and make it exist. God has the ability to reverse the condition of your life. You are Mr. Ugly, you'll become Mr. Beautiful. Hallelujah. You are Mr. Barren, you'll become Mr. Fruitful. Hallelujah. God is able to do that in an instant. Ang atong faith has been crippled for many years because this is how we do it. Okay, Lord, perform. And when you perform, I will believe it. To cease to believe. Let it happen first, Lord. Therefore, I will believe. That is not the way it's done. The way it's done, if you believe, he acts. Hallelujah. If you believe, he performs. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus has to ask the sick person, do you believe that I can heal this? I can heal you? Yes, Lord. Help my unbelief. See, he is believing, but he is also clinging to unbelief. Especially if you have been adjusting to all your problems. You have problem with your body. You are sick and you have disease. You have adjusted to it. Even if God will speak to you that I will heal you, you are more convinced that you will not anymore be healed because you accepted it. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, Abraham probably had thought of accepting it, but he glorified God. He said, I would rather believe God than what I see. Palakpakan natin ato, Lord. So, I'm giving you two things that I saw in the response of Abraham. Number one, he believed the promise of God as it was said. Number two, he believed it strongly because every promise has a opposition from the devil. So he believed it strongly. Here's number three. And number three is the, the, the key, the real power of Abraham's faith and the real power of our faith. Number three is he believed the God who promised. One of the ways that makes your faith weak is because you can read the scriptures. Maybe you say, ah, it's good, it's good, I believe this. But you only believe what is written, you do not believe who wrote it. It's like, I believe the person who is speaking to me, but I don't, I, I believe the, the message of the person speaking to me, but I don't believe that person. No effect. The word of God and the promises of God will not affect you if you don't believe in the ability and the capacity of God. Abraham believed God, the God who made the promise. Let me cite you several things. Number one, he was of course responding to the word of God. He believed in the God who considered him and can decree what he has, what he can become. He be, Abraham believed that God is so good, he was even considered. This is what verse, this verse says, in the presence of him whom he believed. That, that expression there in your Bible, in the presence of him whom he believed, the, the, the indication of that, ver, of that phrase means that, kung sa ilonggo pa, believe gin ako kay Lord ba? Gin include ya pa ko? That is what he was saying. In the presence of him whom he believed, he was just thankful that God considered him and looked at him with, with that expectation. God is saying, I know what you can become. Now, if, if someone comes to you and say, I know what you can become, how would you feel? You know, I was encouraged by people who came to me and say, you know, you, I can see in you, you are an extraordinary boy. You know, they believed in me. And those are only human beings. How would you respond when God, who created the whole universe, He knows all about you, and then He comes to you and say, you know, I know what you can become. Therefore, I am making this promise to you. You will be a father of many nations. I am so thankful that God considered me, as Paul would say, I was once a murderer. I was a violent man. I was a blasphemer. But God, by His grace, counted me worthy and putting me into the ministry. You know, that is part of your faith in God. Part of your faith in God is to glorify Him because He counted you worthy to receive forgiveness, receive salvation. You did not earn it. How much money do you want to pay in order to go to heaven? Even if you win the grand lotto, one billion dollars, that's the grand lotto. How many of you wants to buy lotto tickets? I'm selling. No, no, there's no such thing. One billion dollars, what can it do for just a few years? But you know what I have? The wealth that will last for eternity, forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't, we don't appreciate that. We don't appreciate the fact that God looked at us. We were ugly, we were broken, we were sinful, we were dark, we were messed up. And then God says, you, there's hope in you. I know what you can become. I know what Jed can become. Hallelujah. 
He'll be a good gentleman. I know what Jetan can become. He'll be a good uh, scientist. Hallelujah. And a good husband. That was the effect in Abraham. Lord, believe ka gin sa ko. I believe in you, Lord. Pero kapag pati ka gin mi chan sa ko. How many of you have passed that, that stage? Come on, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Nakaagi na kama sinang stage. Some of you do not understand what I'm saying. He comes to you and God says, I know what you can become. Hallelujah. I know what you can become. Hallelujah. He believed that he will be father of many nations. Now, also, uh, the God, he believed in the God who gives life to the dead and calls to existence the things that don't exist. See, the, the, the power of his faith is he knows that God is capable of something. How many of you know that God is capable of resurrecting the dead? His body is dead, but God knows how to resurrect the dead. He was commanded to kill his son Isaac. He already believed that God has power to resurrect the dead. Palakpakan nato ng Lord. Hallelujah! Woo! The power of our faith is because we know the capacity of our God. We know what He will do. We know the capacity of His power. Hallelujah! He calls the things that do not exist as though they were. That is the ability of our God. He believed in the God who spoke the word. He can call to existence the things that don't exist. Hallelujah. Amen. When the devil says to you, you will be bankrupt. Your business will go bankrupt. That's the devil. When God comes to you, what will he say? What do you think he will say? Your business will float. Your business will rise above the waves. Your business will rise above the waves higher than all the other waves. Hallelujah. If it is God, He can do it. Amuna nga dapat, i-please natin si Lord. Palakpakan natin natin, Lord. Next, Abraham believed in this, this God who is worthy of glory and who is able to do what He promised. He has the capacity to be faithful in what he says. God will not tell a lie. Hallelujah! God will not violate his nature. He is true. That is why I'm serving him. I'm serving him because the Bible says all the rest are liars. Only God tells the truth. God is the God of truth. And he will never abandon his promise. He is able to do what he promised. That is why Abraham says, that he is worthy of glory, I will start glorifying God. You know, when you are silent, when God gives you a promise, you know what it tells God? It tells that you are not believing God. But when you hear God speaks to you, and you start saying, Hallelujah, Lord, I glorify you. Lord, my logic contradicts it. My feelings and the facts around me contradicts it. But I would rather believe you because you are able to fulfill your promise. Even if I stop now and only this, this truth, you are able to survive the rest of the time you have in the world. Because God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. I will be there with you. Hallelujah. So, let's close this. The Bible says in Romans 4 that this was not written only for the sake of Abraham. It was written for all of you. Written not for him alone, but also for us. Romans 4, 23 to 24. It was written for you because your faith, hallelujah, happens to be just like the faith of Abraham. You Gentiles are included in the promise of Abraham. The Jews 
thought that they alone will receive the promise. No. According to the Bible, Romans chapter 4, we Gentiles, we Ilongos, and we uh, Australians, and whoever we are, we are entitled to all the promises of God. Amen? Now, I want you to close your eyes. Begin to think about something that God has spoken to you in the last few weeks or a few days or a few months, even months. If you can still remember what God has spoken to you in your heart. Things that He says you can become. Mga ginhambal ni Lord about His promise, how, what are those things that you can become? I want you to think about those things and, and begin to hold it as if you want to present it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you doing that now? So I want you to stand up, just hold your hands like this, and say, Lord, I hold in my hands the promise I heard about you. I heard a mirror word. I heard about your promise that you will restore my life. You'll give me back what I lost. You will restore my wife or my husband. You will restore my children. Lord, I hold that in, in, the, in my heart right now. I will believe your word. It may be against logic. It may be against the facts. But Lord, I will believe your promise to me. If truly that God has spoken to you, I want you to stand up where you are. Just hold it. Hold your promise in your hand and say, God has spoken to me. He will help me. I will believe him because I, I'm not only believing what he said, I am believing him who said. I am believing that he is capable. I am believing that he is able to do what he said he will do. Amen. Raise your hands now. Just raise it to the Lord. Many of you, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, it is important for us to know what you said about us. It is important for us, O oh Lord, to hear who we are in your eyes. In your eyes. In your knowledge about us, Lord. It is important also for us to believe who you are. The God who, who can resurrect the dead. Who gives life to the dead. The God who is able to call into existence the things that right now do not exist. But now, Lord, you are able to speak for those things that do not exist to exist. Hallelujah. You are the God who is able to fulfill your promise. You never fail. You never forget. You never forget about us. You never forget about your word to us, Lord. I pray for these people, oh Lord, who are raising their hands. I pray that their faith, Lord, will rise up in the name of Jesus they will cling on to your words and they will look at you. Believe in you. You are our Father in heaven who is able to do what you said. Hallelujah, Jesus. Stand by. Hallelujah. Even though we have already prayed for what you Believe in your heart to be God's plan for you. I still want you to come in here if you still are in, you know, thirsty and hungry that God will confirm things to you. I want you to come here as we sing this song for prayer. We'll pray for you. Okay? Come if you believe. Come if you have faith. Hallelujah. Lay it before him. There's some more. Hallelujah. Some more. Coming here is also an act of faith, you know. A humbling faith. But you want to trust God. Let's start. I will start praying for people here. You can still come.
Don't be shy. We'll pray for you. We'll believe the Lord. Let's start praying for people. Praise God. From there. You can hope against hope, the Bible says. If the situation is hopeless, you can believe God anyway. There's no hopelessness in God. Hallelujah. Say the word and then Start praying for people here. Friends who are there at the back, you can hold hands, please. We are a community of praying people. Hold hands, pray for your brothers, sisters. To this heart of mine, all that I am with all creation, hey, every word that you spoke, we will not be shaken, clinging for life to all your promise, hey, every word that you say. So will handle every word you say. Word made flesh, you wrote in grace. Promise came through cross and grave. Oh, words of stone you spelled out. To this heart of mine, all that I am with all creation, hang on every word that you've spoken, you will not be shaken, bringing for life to all your promise, hang on every word that you've written in a billion skies. To this heart of mine, all that I am with all creation, hang on every word that you spoke, it will not be shaken, clinging for life to all your promise, hang on every word that you say. So we'll hang on every word you say Cause I know your word will never ever fail And my soul will hang on every word you say Say the word and there is Say the word as it bones rise. Every star and and hangs on your voice. For your word never returns void. Hallelujah. Raise your hands for a blessing. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we have many things settled this morning, Lord. You have spoken to us. We will hang to your words. We will believe. We will interpret your words. We will put them into action. When you show who we are, we will go out there in the world, behave 
like who we are. We will behave the way you pronounced us to be. New persons. Old creations have, been, have passed away. The new has come. We will behave like saints, children of God. We will behave like forgiven people. Hallelujah. We will behave as your light in the world, salt of the earth, a living that impacts our surrounding. I pray God for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that the moment they read the word, they will find you speaking to them and they will trust you. They will trust your ability to fulfill what you said. They will trust your capacity to, to call into existence the things that do not. Lord, that they will not be discouraged about what they see around them, Lord, opposing their faith. Let them believe you. You are greater than all the oppositions of the enemy. Thank you so much, Father in heaven. We want to grow, becoming people of faith. Pray, Lord, that uh, to pray for healing of others, to pray for deliverance of others, to pray for the miracles, Lord, that is needed by people in our surrounding, in our city, in our family, in our nation, and even in the world. We believe, Lord, you are listening and you are answering our prayers. Let your blessings be upon your people. When they go out, when they come in, they will think about your mirror word to them. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Amen.